Hi everybody, uh, my name is Brian Carson and welcome to this uh, series of videos on muscle physiology. Um, at the end of this series of videos, uh, what should you know? We should know a little bit about muscle structure, um, about the filaments which are involved in, in muscle function, about excitation and contraction coupling, cross bridge cycling, uh, regulation of, of muscle movement by calcium, uh, the creation uh, and retention of muscle tension, uh, different fiber types within the muscle, a little bit about muscle metabolism, um, and the response to exercise in muscle in terms of its adaptation. Um, so with that in mind, we, we'll get started on the first piece, which is uh, the muscle structure. So here we see the muscle structure. Um, it's bound within uh, a large piece of connective tissue uh, known as the fascia. And within those, there are a number of fascicles which are housed. And fascicles are effectively bundles of muscle fibers which stretch along the length of the muscle. And within these muscle fibers, we have a series of myofibrils. And within these myofibrils, we have a number of protein filaments which are involved in, in muscle contraction. So we'll look at these uh, myofibrils, the protein filaments, and the units within those which are termed sarcomeres in a little bit more detail. So this is a typical sarcomere structure. When we look at skeletal muscle under a microscope, it has what we call or term a striated or stripy appearance. So if you look at the myofibril on top, um, this Z line to Z line, that's repetition of one particular sarcomere. And what you'll see in this area are, are, are areas of light and dark uh, tissue. And this is because this change between light and dark is because of the makeup of the protein filaments within uh, the muscle fiber. Um, and they are both the thin and thick filaments. So if we zoom in a little bit on the sarcomere from Z line to Z line here, uh, which you see in this particular image, um, we can see a little bit more detail in the structure. And what we have here are an arrangement of uh, thick and thin filaments. Uh, here we have the thick filaments uh, known as myosin. And if we look at the myosin a little bit more closely here, it's a very, very thick filament and it's, uh, it has a number of these myosin heads on it. And we'll go into the structure of the myosin in a little bit more detail in a moment. Um, here we have, in purple, we have the thin filaments. Okay, and the thin filaments are uh, predominantly made up of actin, uh, tropomyosin and troponin and again we'll have a, a more detailed look at the structure of the thin filaments uh, in a moment. But if we look at the orientation of these thick and thin filaments uh, and why skeletal muscle appears striated under a microscope is because we have these different areas and zones and bands within each sarcomere. So along the length of a myofibril we have a series of repetitions of sarcomere after sarcomere after sarcomere. So if I highlight uh, these areas in red, and we look at our diagram here in the top, what they represent here is the eye band. And if you look at the eye band, it's pretty light in color. And if we look here uh, at these areas marked in red, which represent the eye band on this particular sarcomere, so uh, there's an eye band here at this end, and an eye band here on the right. Here's your eye band on the left, here's your eye band on the right. They contain only thin filaments. So you'll see within these red boxes that I've drawn that there is no thick filament. There is no myosin in this area. There is only thin filament. Therefore, under the microscope, these areas appear lighter in terms of color, in terms of shade. If we look at this area, which I've highlighted in this green box, okay, this is termed the A band. So if we look at our diagram on the top, here's the A band. What you'll see is that the A band effectively runs the length of the thick filament. And within this box, we've got areas of both thick and thin filament are housed in, in the A band. And for that reason, because thick and thin filament are both present, this has a darker appearance um, within the sarcomere if we look at a, a, a skeletal muscle under a skeletal muscle fiber under a microscope. Okay, and the final area that I want to point out to you here is in the middle. And this is called the H zone, all right, which uh, overlaps this M line, which is the midline of the sarcomere. And within the H zone, marked in blue here, what you'll see is that only thick filament is housed in this area, and that there is no thin filament in this particular zone. Okay, at, at, 
at rest in, in, a, in, a, in a skeletal muscle sarcomere. And you can see that on the diagram here at the top. It's slightly lighter in color than the A-band, and it's slightly darker than the I-band because the thick filament will, will give it a darker color. So only thick filament is present in the H-zone. So just to recap, at either end of the sarcomere, we have an I-band, which contains only thin filament. Most of the length of the sarcomere is made up in green here of the A-band, which contains both thick and thin filament. And at the center here is this H-zone, which contains only thick filament. There is no thin filament present in the H-zone. Okay, so let's look at the two uh, filaments, both the thin and the thick. Thin filaments are predominantly made up of actin. Um, and when actin is in its globular form, or its singular form, it's called G-actin, globular actin molecules. And you'll see on each of these uh, six actin molecules represented here, there is a binding site, okay? And this binding site is specific for myosin, okay? So only myosin can bind with actin at this particular site. When these G-actin molecules uh, come together, um, they are known as F-actin which is, stands for fibrous actin. And you can see the arrangement of these actin molecules in a fibrous actin. Um, always the myosin binding site is to the outside. If the myosin binding site were here next to this other um, actin molecule, it would be blocked and therefore would not enable myosin binding. So these myosin binding sites are always to the outside. And how thin filaments are made up is usually double, double helical actin strands, so this interweaving uh, two strands of fibrous actin. And again, you can see on both strands that the myosin binding site is always pointing to the outside to allow myosin to interact. In the lowest diagram here, the bottom diagram on the screen right now, you can see a couple of other structures which make up uh, the thin filament. They are no namely Tropomyosin, which is this purple band here, running across the thin film, running across the actin uh, filaments, and a troponin complex, which is um, attached to the tropomyosin. Um, you will notice that the tropomyosin is orientated in such a way that it is blocking the myosin binding site on each of these actin molecules. Okay, so we've got two tropomyosin bands on each of the interweaving double helical actin strands. Okay, we'll come back to, to those and, and their function in a moment. Let's look a little bit at the thick filament now. So the thick filament is made up of myosin, um, and this will be a, a single uh, myosin um, molecule here as such. And you can see here at the end of the molecule is a myosin head. And usually what we have is interweaving two particular myosin molecules bound at their tail ends. So we've got a head at either end. And look at the orientation of the myosin head. It's pointed out to the side. And the same is true at the opposite end. And we have these interweaving molecules. So what you're looking at then is when we look at a, a thick filament, there's several uh, myosin molecules interweave. And you see here, for example, here are the myosin head. So this myosin head might be associated uh, with this one if two mole myosin molecules were bound at their tail ends. Okay, and you can see the orientation of all the myosin heads on this side are all facing away, and the opposite is true on this side. They're all facing away, but to, to the opposite direction. And in the middle here of uh, the thick filament, you will see something referred to as the bare zone. So what you'll notice from looking at this is this bare zone is an area which does not contain uh, myosin heads. So again, if we look at those in the context of the whole sarcomere structure here, our thin filament is represented in blue and our thick filament here in, in sort of orange, uh, you'll see that that bare zone actually matches up with another area which we defined on the previous slide, which was the H-zone. Now, if you recall, what was not in the H-zone? There were no thin filaments in the H-zone. Uh, and we'll talk a lot about myosin and actin interacting, but there's no thin filament, there's no actin in this hate zone or bear zone, therefore there's not necessarily a requirement to have myosin heads here because the myosin is not going to bind to or interact with actin in this particular zone. Okay, so what happens in, or what does a sarcomere look like in a relaxed muscle um, compared with a contracted 
uh, muscle, which is shortened. So along the length of the fiber, we have, like I said earlier, uh, repetition of a series of sarcomeres all the way along this particular fiber. So here's an example of two sarcomeres side by side. In reality, in, in a relaxed muscle, it would be many, many multiples of this. Okay, so here's our relaxed bicep in this case on the left-hand side. Here's our two sarcomeres side by side. This area here would be our eye band. This would also be our eye band. This would also be an eye band at this area. Okay, note again, no thick filament within this area. Here's the A band of sarcomere 1. This will be the A band of sarcomere 2. And then here's the H zone of sarcomere 1. And here's the H zone of sarcomere 2. So if I just move the animation on and we look at a contracted muscle. So here was the relaxed bicep. Here's your contracted or shortened bicep muscle. Here's what our two sarcomeres side by side shortened look like. So what changes do you notice? Well, the first one that we should see is that the I band that existed here is significantly reduced or shortened. The same is true for this I band, significantly reduced or shortened. And the same is true for this I band out here, significantly reduced or shortened. And that shortened the length of these two sarcomeres side by side, and effectively the muscle has contracted. There is no difference if we look between our relaxed and our contracted muscle, there is no difference in the length of the A band. Remember, the A band effectively runs the length of the thick filament. So the thick filament doesn't change its orientation as such. The last thing that you may have noticed is that the H zone is particularly reduced. So here we see the H zone of a relaxed sarcomere, and here we see the H zone, which is much smaller, okay? So we see much more overlapping of the thick and thin filaments in the contracted sarcomere. The same is true uh, for this sarcomere. So what's effectively happened is our A band has remained unchanged. Our I band and our H zone have reduced in size because the thin filaments have moved on each sarcomere have moved towards the center, towards this midline in each sarcomere. You can see here the distance between the thin filament and the midline. Same is true here in sarcomere 2. And then when we look in the contracted uh, sarcomeres, we can see here uh, that that distance is significantly reduced. So the shortening of the muscle uh, results in, it results from a shortening of the I band and a shortening of the H zone, greater overlapping of the thick and thin filaments.